We left uh, St. Thomas in the US Virgin Islands uh, in the middle of the night uh, where we had encountered true modern day pirates, long story not to be told here. And uh, Dan and I motored Wolfhound down to St. Kitts to visit some friends there. And as we arrived on uh, Sunday afternoon, we were greeted by a huge school of porpoises. And we ended up anchoring in uh, the best anchorage in St. Kitts, which is called White House Bay. It's on the Caribbean side in the southern end of the island. And uh, it took about a day to clear in because we had to get corona tests done in St. Kitts before we're allowed to, to land on land. And uh, once we've done that, we uh, enjoyed ourselves a little bit. We uh, went to uh, visit uh, some friends. We had a lunch a couple of times at a very cool place called the Shipwreck. <laughs> it looks like a wreck. The anchorage in uh, White House Bay is uh, quite nice. It's a um, sand bottom, it's about 25, 30 feet deep, and it's very protected on the Caribbean side. However, um, because it's sand bottom, sometimes the anchor tends to drag a little bit. And uh, there's also currents that kind of makes the boat swing around a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. It's a very constant depth for a huge area. So every week or so, we had to kind of reset the anchor to get a bit closer to shore. But it wasn't one of those uh, situations where you drag so much that uh, you worry about the safety of the boat. During uh, the stay in White House Bay, which was about six weeks, I was basically alone on the boat. There was no crew there anymore. And uh, we had to move the boat once because of the anchor was dragging a little bit. And I also wanted to hoist the mizzen and check out and make sure that that one was set up properly for a return sail to Europe. So I got help from uh, a friend, Roger, and uh, Patrick, who is a local fisherman, and his uh, kids came to visit and uh, we had a nice day uh, on Wolfhound uh, after we had done our, our little adjustments and, and whatnot. We also had an opportunity to go and visit a really fun event. It was a fishing competition in the northern end of the island on the Atlantic side called the Jeff Bay. And there was a, a, a local event, a little bit of a folk fest with booths, with food. And uh, yeah, it was, it was quite amazing to see. A week before the crew for the return trip to Europe arrived, I had some friends from California that came and visit. And uh, we had a wonderful weekend doing pretty much nothing. We, we went to visit uh, Brimstone Castle. We took a little motor tour around Booby Island, which is between uh, St. Kitts and Nevis. And uh, it was uh, lovely to see my friends, and uh, we had a, a good time. And once they left, um, and the crew, a few of the crew had arrived, I moved the boat into Christoph Harbor, which is a, a beautiful super yacht marina that is uh, brand new and hasn't really been discovered yet. Uh, and that's where we uh, docked Wolfhound for provisioning, refueling, and, and all the things that we need to do to prepare for the return trip. My uh, brother Martin was part of the return crew, and uh, once he arrived, we went up to look at uh, the place where his boat, uh, the 12-meter replica Kate, had been built, uh, which was built on St. Kitts by Philip Walwyn. And my brother is now in full swing of restoring Kate, and it was wonderful for him to meet some of the people that built her originally. And uh, we pick up the mainsail to Kate, which was left there. And uh, the crew was slowly starting to arrive, and there uh, was anticipation in the air, of course. And uh, one by one, they came in by, uh, by flights from, uh, from Europe. Uh, we had uh, ended up having uh, six crew in total for the return trip. Uh, Geyer was uh, Martin's friend from Sweden. Uh, my brother Martin, of course, was part of the crew. We sailed since we were very young. And uh, Pete was a, a local guy who uh, I got to know through some friends. And he was a wonderful sailor and a, a very accomplished cook. Adrian Jupp came from Europe, from uh, Mallorca and from Holland. And of course, myself.
uh, St. Kitts in the background, we're just leaving and uh, reaching in about 18 knots of breeze and uh, doing nine and a half knots and uh, it's the beginning of a, a long, wonderful trip, I hope. The first uh, three, four days after we left St. Kitts was absolutely splendid sailing. We had a, a good uh, fresh breeze and a reach in 20, 25 knots. We're sailing with a mizzen, a reef mizzen, uh, main four, stay sail and jib. And uh, we were continuously sailing at between 11 and 12 and a half knot. And just a splendid sailing. The um, boat was well balanced and we had a, a wonderful time. And eventually the, the, the wind started to, uh, to ease off a little bit. But we had about three and a half days approximately. Absolutely splendid sailing. Unfortunately, after uh, those uh, three, four days of uh, fast reaching, uh, the wind uh, died down quite a bit, and uh, we ended up uh, effectively motor sailing. First we were motor sailing, and then towards the end we were almost purely motoring. And uh, it was a, a little bit of a disappointment after this wonderful sail we have going north towards uh, Bermuda. Uh, but we were rewarded with some incredible nights, the starry nights, the sunsets, the sunrises, and uh, it, was, it was just magic. I, I would say, even though the sailing part of it wasn't, uh, wasn't the most memorable thing, the, just being at sea in this calm weather and, and, uh, and these unbelievable nights that we had, is, uh, it was almost uh, spiritual. And um, we also had opportunity to fly the drone without losing it. <laughs> it was a close call a couple of times. But uh, all in all, it was a very memorable part of the, of the trip. And uh, <clears throat> you can take many pictures of sunsets and sunrises, and it's tempting to include too much of that. But uh, as you can see from some of the footage here, uh, there was some spectacular scenery that we were rewarded with. So uh, something to remember. We uh, finally arrived in Horta after uh, a fair amount of light uh, wind and uh, our original plan was to just stay there for uh, a day and refuel and then continue on because of the, the way the weather window looked. But unfortunately we had a hydraulic issue with the boat and uh, we decided to stay there to fix those issues. Um, we found a wonderful place on the commercial side of the harbor with help of Duncan, our agent, who was very helpful. And uh, the first night, uh, we of course went to Pete's Sport Bar, a sports cafe, to have dinner. And I think everyone who ever visited uh, Horta has, uh, at least all sailors, have been there at least once. It's a very famous place. Yeah, most beautiful color ever seen. Um, we tried to. Uh, <laughs> put our name on the famous wall and we made a little template, but it did not work out exactly the way we had hoped. Um, I don't know if it was a template or the spray paint, but uh, uh, once we <laughs> tried a couple of times, I realized we have to bring an artist next time. And maybe for uh, next Halloween, we can, uh, we can reuse the template with uh, red blood paint. <laughs> Anyway, we had very strong winds while we were there. We had a, a blow coming through with 40 knots of wind. We gust up to 60. And uh, while we were waiting for parts uh, that were being sent from, uh, from Holland, uh, we were doing some sightseeing. It's a wonderful island, it's beautiful, green and lush. And uh, we rented a car to drive up and look at the volcano. And uh, naturally, with our, our luck that day, we had uh, the car okay. overheating, yeah. and we thought we were short on uh, cooling water, so <laughs> gay our fun house. But uh, it was a fan belt that was broken, so uh, we had to switch car. Uh, we finally made it up to Volcano, which is uh, on a clear day, is probably stunningly beautiful up there. Uh, when it's uh, the clouds are low, you don't see much. It's very cold and the raw 
fog blows through your heart, so um, I did not walk around the volcano like Martin and Gayer did. Uh, the island is incredibly lush and green. It's extremely beautiful there, of course. Uh, it's because it's raining a lot. And um, we ended up uh, uh, enjoying ourselves there. I hope everyone who is uh, sailing across the Atlantic coming back from the Caribbean probably, or more often than not, stay in Horta. And the locals there are incredibly friendly, incredibly helpful. We're leaving Horta and Pico and we're going wing and wing to the next island and then we'll come up a bit higher up. <laughs> we are one day out of Horta, 160 nautical miles. We're sailing straight east. And tonight, before dark, we're gonna jive and go north to, uh, yeah, to avoid the big low pressure as it's straight north of us, straight west of Ireland. Um, and it has a lot of wind and a lot of sea state. And we're gonna go on the south east edge of that one up towards English Channel, but not too early, because then we got all the wind and all the waves we don't like. But today, we're reaching nicely with a main four stay sail and jib and we're not doing the mizzen yet because uh, we want to sail through the night and then tomorrow when we see the new sea state from uh, from that big low we decided we're gonna tile on with the mizzen also um, it's quite common uh, that you have birds that come and land on the boat when you're far out at sea I I presume that these birds are basically lost and they're trying to just rest a little bit before they continue on. Um, it's hard to tell whether these birds that land uh, eventually makes it to wherever they're going. This this time we had two doves that came and landed on the boat. And uh, on the way over from Europe to the Caribbean, we had a, a, a number of swallows that landed and spent the night on the boat and then took off again. Uh, one of them died, probably from exhaustion or lack of water or something, but... We're going to take some pictures of our birds. Let's go through this one. As we approached the uh, entrance towards the English Channel, we started to see more and more shipping traffic. And uh, I don't really know what's normal, but it seemed like we saw a lot of tankers. I presume there's a heightened activity of uh, tankers delivering oil and maybe even gas to Europe from uh, from the Americas because of the war in Ukraine. And um, yeah, once you're in the English Channel, you see, of course, tremendous amount of ships when you look at your chart plotter with a... Once we passed through the English Channel and we were up on the northwest uh, corner of the Netherlands, that would be just outside Den Helder and islands of uh, Texel and Teschelling. Uh, there was basically no wind left and we decided to use the time to take off uh, all the sails of the rig as we were just motoring in, in basically no wind condition. Uh, so that when we got back to Wilhelmshaven, uh, the crew could uh, take off. Everyone of course was very eager to get home and see their friends and family and uh, we had spent uh, five weeks uh, on this trip. Uh, we left uh, on May uh, 11th, we left from uh, St. Kitts and we uh, made it into Wilhelmshaven on June 18th. So that was a, a long trip with a two week uh, stop in Horta included in that time. Det är inte kommit